from Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Specialist in the manufacture, assembly, sales and support of diamond tools and equipment diamond products has introduced a new range of Titan high frequency wall saws, which was introduced onto the market in June. Nomvelo Botelezi has the story. Speaking to Diamond Products co-director Brian Clark about the electric wall saw, he goes in depth about what makes the product unique to other products that are currently on the market. Primarily because it's, it's electric. The, the main drive unit is an electric motor and not a hydraulic motor. All the existing or the majority of existing wall saws in South Africa are hydraulically driven. This is driven with a high frequency electric motor. So it's lighter, it's, it's much more portable um, and much easier to use on construction sites. One other added value point is because it doesn't have hydraulic oil, it's, it's green, it's environmentally friendly, so there's no contamination on sites with leaking oil pipes that, that, that with the oil that has to be cleaned up afterwards. Clark highlights the benefits and the key features of the electric wall saw. One of the key benefits is it's, it's more portable, it's lighter. Many of these saws are used in, in multi-storey buildings, in, in areas that are difficult or have limited access. So portability, the fact that a single person can use the saw, set it up and use the saw. Um, with the development of these high frequency motors, they, they are now technically very reliable um, and offer a great performance versus the old technology of hydraulic uh, saws. Brian goes on to say that the technology offered by the electric wall saw is new to South Africa. The main thing is the high frequency motors. High frequency motors in, in our industry are relatively new. They've probably only been used in, in Europe for probably the last five years. We're now on the second generation of high frequency electric motors. They've now become very, very reliable. They did have a reliability problem in the, in the early years. They're now very reliable. Uh, maintenance is very low. And again, they're very compact, very lightweight, very portable and reliable. So over the, over the predecessors or, or hydraulic units, they, they're a, a great alternative. It makes it easier and faster to do the, the work that you need to do with them. Brian concludes by telling Engineering News that the electric wall saw is manufactured in Austria by leading manufacturers of wall saw and core drilling equipment. The saw is made in Austria. Um, Braun is, is one of the leading manufacturers of wall sawing and core drilling equipment in the world. They've been manufacturing it since 1984, so they have a vast um, history of expertise in, in this field. And we have partnered with them to offer this technology to customers in South Africa or Southern Africa. Other news making headlines this week. Public Works Minister Tulas Ngesi vows to take steps to rid the construction industry of criminal tendencies. Namport's aim for the Vulfus Bay port to be a gateway to SADAC gains traction and private sector funding is critical for the growth of the affordable rental markets. The combined fine of 1.46 billion rand imposed on the group of 15 construction companies admitting to collusive tendering was viewed in many quarters as merely a slap on the wrist and sent out the message that large firms could get away with fraud and corruption, says Public Works Minister Tulas Ngesi. The fine imposed of 1.4 billion is viewed as a slap on the wrist in many quarters which sends out the message that large firms can get away with fraud and corruption. So we need to be even-handed when stamping out corruption. We are going to take whatever necessary steps to ensure that the construction industry is free of criminal tendencies. The engineering, procurement and construction contract for the Vulfus Bay port expansion is set to be awarded in August, with construction to start on site early next year and completion scheduled for 2017. We punch far above our weight from a port, from a port perspective. And the reason for that is, is the preferred access to the neighbouring countries, primarily Zambia, DRC, Zimbabwe, Angola and Botswana. Our biggest growth is along the Transcaprivi, uh, into Zambia and the DRC. And it's not only one-way traffic, it's not only resources coming out. 
Greater private sector investment, leveraged through sustainable public-private partnerships, is critical to effectively narrow the supply gap in the affordable rental housing market, says housing development funder Gauteng Partnership Fund Investment Officer Katlehu Nchapa. The government on its own uh, would not be able um, to remove the backlog as it grows every year. So um, what we are trying to do here is, as our mandate says, is to attract funding um, from the private sector and to channel it into the affordable housing market. We have funding from the government uh, that we were given when we were set up. And uh, what happens is we, we try to leverage fund, funding from the private sector. We try to make it attractive to the private sector um, for them to have profits. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.